Today I'm going to run you through how you can use the Leonardo AI Canvas Editor to edit your AI art and even your own images or photos. So once you've actually logged in, there's a few different ways you can get to it and I want to cover these because it gives you a few options for your convenience. One is when you log in, you can simply go down to AI Canvas and just simply use it from there. But you can also even take other people's images, click on them, click the little three dots down here and you can actually edit in the canvas from there, which also then extends itself to if you're going to your personal feed, you can find an image in here somewhere and you can even click on that image and then edit that in Canvas as well. But even when you're actually creating images in the AI image generator, as you're generating them, you get the same options again. You can simply hover over the image and edit in the Canvas from there. But let's scroll down and let's see what we can get out of this image and edit that one in the Canvas. The first thing I want to show is I'm going to zoom out a little bit. I'm using my mouse wheel here and it's sort of at size at the moment. I'm actually going to also import an image of my own by going here to upload image. And from there, I can choose from the community from previous generations like I've looked at before, or I can upload from my computer. I'm going to choose this image of this car from the floods. And I'm going to just move this around and I'm going to use these little corners here to resize it. So I've got a few images here. I can move them around and resize them. So this image is actually quite large because it is an upscale. So I may not want to resize it too much, but I can. But in order for this to work, we do need to work within dimensions that are suitable. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to up my square size here to 1024 by 1024. So it produces a larger generation. So if I want to, I can produce high higher resolution generations. Everything happens within this square. So if I want to move this square around, I can lock it in place so I can't, or I can unlock it and actually move that around as to where I want to actually make my changes. Now, the reason I'm going to use such a large square this first time is I want to extend my images. So I'm going to show you a few different tricks we can use to extend images using Leonardo AI. First of all, I can just extend across here and I can also snap if I want to uh, and try and line that up to here as best I can. It's sort of not perfect. But if I want to extend, I can move this portal out to try and extend this wing. One thing I would probably want to do is actually get the original prompt from this if I want to keep that consistency. So all I'm going to do is I'm actually going to open up a new tab, head into my personal feed and find this image. I'm going to click on it and I'm just going to copy the prompt here. I tab back and now that I have this selected and I want to just extend out a little bit, I go down to my prompt area here and I'm going to paste in that prompt it's going to use seven of my 150 tokens because I'm still just on the free plan and I'm going to generate. It's going to produce some options for me. I've got here, I can cycle through. I've got a bit of extra here. I'm going to cycle through. That one's also pretty cool. Having the other orc there is cool. Uh, I'm actually going to run with this one here and click accept. Now what I can do, one thing you'll notice is it actually creates a separate image. So I'm going to lock this viewport and move this out of the way because what I want to do is actually now just extend this image without the actual extra orc. So I'm going to actually remove a little from here and just put in battlefield. And now I'm going to generate again to show you that we can sort of still tweak what it is that we get. Hit generate. So we've got people battling here. We've got some guns. Got some funny text in there. But uh, I'm going to stick with number one here. So you can actually, if I were to just simply leave that as sky and ground, it would probably extend that pretty well. But you get the idea. You can actually use your prompt to extend and improve on this image. So it's a, it's a pretty cool uh, effect and pretty cool tool you can use. What's also cool is if I want to extend on this image. So what I'm going to do is, for the sake of this video, to save on time and points, I'm going to actually go to two images instead of four, so I only get two options. I'm sticking with Stable Diffusion 1.5, but you can switch to 2.1 if you want to. Um, I'm gonna to go to 512 by 512. I'm gonna unlock this viewport and just move it over here, and I'm gonna lock it again. So what I can do, I can take my photo, and what I can do is just zoom in, and let's say I wanna extend this photo across, because I've got some flood water, grass, and a fence, so I'm just gonna put here 
flood water and wooden fence trees and I hit generate and you see how it's extended this image now the fence doesn't necessarily match but it's still pretty pretty good it's the water has come out seamlessly I think it's even extended the road a little bit into there the sky and if I had four options I could cycle through to pick the best one I think that one's probably the best so I'm going to accept that and now I have this extended image so that's one of the really cool things about AI is not just for art it's actually enhancing and extending photos so I'm going to actually click and what I'm going to do now is remove this over here so we can keep playing we can delete it by hitting delete and there is actually more that we can do what I can also do is if I want to I can resize I can actually erase so let's say I want to sort of blend these two images together I can just sit them here and extend through. But what I'm actually gonna do is get my eraser. I'm gonna make the eraser tool much bigger. And I'm gonna erase some of this background here. And also a little bit of this here, especially getting rid of that mountain. So you can see I've kind of erased a section there and I actually kind of wanna blend the two together. So I'm gonna go flood water to, to sky and mountains not really the best prompt but I'll see just it's funny to see how it will actually blend the two I will say tree maybe it'll pop a tree in the middle we can experiment with this to see what we get so let's hit generate and you see how it's tried to blend the two images together now this is really good if you've got two images that will actually uh, sort of go together these images are very much not the same but uh, if I actually were to take this image whoops hit Control z to undo i'm going to cancel and what i can do is use my select i'm going to actually take this one here and i'm going to hit delete on this one i can put this picture here and then i can also add an image from my previous generations I'm going to scroll down i've got my orc in the battlefield here I've also got another guy here. I've got a few guys here that might actually kind of go together. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna choose this one here. Now remember, you can choose a larger window and produce larger images. I've got this size down for the sake of saving on points so we can get through a bit more of this video. I'm gonna size it down and I can put them next to each other like this. And I'm going to grab my eraser again and just kind of get rid of some of the areas I don't want. Because the ground is quite even in these images. And it should marry up relatively well. I can also see that the ground is a little bit lower here. So I can even just bring that up. So we've got this little man and a big orc. And I'm going to try and get the tops to meet up. I'm going to say late afternoon sky, mountains, and barren wasteland. And we hit generate. It's sort of extended one image and not the other. So we haven't quite gotten the results that we wanted, but you get the idea. We're gonna play with that. We were able to blend one image that went well and another image that didn't. It sort of has just cut them in half. But um, anyway, you get the idea. So it does have its limitations. But what we can do now is actually experiment with a bit more. I'm gonna bring back our main orc guy. Now what we can do is I'm going to enlarge him this time and I can actually play with his face a little bit. So this is where instead of just extending the background, we can now start to inpaint. We've got, we can draw masks in here and things like that. I can erase his mouth, a non-human face and hit generate. I zoom in and I've got some options. So I cycle through my two options it still relied a little bit on the external. But let's say I want to go cancel and I want to play a bit further. I'm actually going to go Stable Diffusion 2.1 to see if I can get something different. Now, you can change the size of this box here, but you can also change the aspect ratio. Now, I think we need something a bit taller. I'm going to go 9 to 16. And I can actually adjust the size of the box. I can't go any smaller than 512, so I can actually adjust the height back up if I want to. 
and I can even choose my select tool to sort of enlarge. Now the mask stays in place whilst the eraser erases. So that's pretty handy to know the difference. And I'm actually gonna use the mask, sorry, use the eraser again to keep going and erase the whole face. And this is a lot of what you can do. The pan gives you the opportunity to move around the screen whilst the select tool gives you the opportunity to choose objects and move them around. But uh, it's pretty much a simple case of selecting what you want, adjusting your AI settings and playing with this. So now I'm gonna change the face to something completely different. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna go four images this time and hit generate using Stable Diffusion 2.1. So we've actually got this face, this face, this face, and this face. I still like number one, I'm gonna hit accept. Now, as I mentioned, this is a separate image. And a few things to consider is I can change the resolution. I can make it up to 1500 by 1500. If I choose Stable Diffusion 1.5, I've still got that same resolution. So you can test things out a little bit, but one thing I recommend is if you wanna keep your images high resolution and you're making large changes, there's a few different ways you might wanna go about it. This image here, I believe is about 2000 by 2000 pixels roughly, and our window was only 512 by 512, which means making changes to small areas is very effective, like the face. However, I can choose to make my window much larger and it will actually use up a lot more tokens. So I can take, I can even hold down shift to select both of these, resize them, whoops, hold down. I've got this image, I hold down shift, and I can select both and I can move these over here. And now I can, I've hit delete accidentally. <laughs> I can go into my prompt down here and because I have a much larger window, I can just now say empty and hit generate. And this will probably take a lot longer because you're using a much larger resolution. So I can do that. The other option is to go down to 512 by 512 and simply move this window down and generate a chunk at a time if you're looking to protect the resolution that you're after. But let's max it out, see what we can make happen. So it hasn't produced a very good result here. I'm gonna actually just zoom out. I'm gonna hit cancel. I'm gonna switch back to Stable Fusion 1.5 and I'm gonna give it a little bit more of an overlap because what we're get, getting some results that are not very uh, good. But I'm actually gonna select this this time to see if that makes a difference. I'm unsure if it does. And I'm going to say barren wasteland. I'm going to say yellow sky, sun, burnt, dirt. And by actually overlapping these a little bit, I'm going to give it a bit more information to play with. I'm going to select this image and we're going to try again. Now you'll notice it's extended the background a bit better and we've got that higher resolution. I've still got two choices. I sort of like the first one for the background, but not the wing. Whereas I like the, the wing a bit better on the second one. The background's a bit bland. I'm just gonna stick with number one. And the other thing to mention is while you're working on your prompts, there's still a button down here where you can add in a negative prompt. So if there's anything you don't want in there, if I didn't want clouds, I could just type in clouds and it would try, use its best judgment to not put clouds in the image. So you do have that option as well. Also keep in mind, you have your undo and redo buttons here. So if you undo something, you can then redo it and You've got some pretty basic options, but otherwise it's a matter of just selecting the areas you want, erasing things you want to fill in. Uh, I actually think that selecting the image seems to have a difference. I don't have any confirmation on that. Uh, but otherwise you choose your, your model, the number of images, the resolution, everything down here. And if you want to get advanced, the guidance scale, you can slide that up if you want to adjust how, sort of how strictly it will actually use your prompt. You can see here how strong your prompt is weighted. So if I bring that right up, it will almost directly reference that prompt. And um, you don't that may produce unwanted results, whereas it'll use a bit more of its own sort of guidance if you bring it down here and sort of be a bit more opinionated in what it creates. Tiling means you can create things that repeat. So if I wanted to, I could actually have this as a tile and it would come up and meet again. So let's say I move all of our images across to here. Whoops. I'm actually just going to pan over and instead move the window. And we're gonna do one final experiment. I'm gonna actually turn tiling on. Keep that same high resolution to see what it actually ends up with over here and 
we can actually lay it next to it to see how it repeats. Uh, we'll go with two options again, and let's generate. Now, once again, I didn't have the image selected. So I don't know if that has actually impacted it. So I'm gonna actually cancel, try that again. So having the image selected hasn't made a huge difference, but uh, the tiling looks to be a little bit, it's not great just yet, I'm guessing. Uh, it's probably better off done alone when you're using your image generation, but uh, that's still pretty cool. I'm not very happy, I'm gonna cancel that, and I'm just gonna run with what we have here. So if I wanna save this image, I'm ready to go with it. All I need to do is go over here to download the artwork. As far as I know, I don't think there's actually a way that you can bring this image back into your feed to play with further. It seems to be very much just once you're in here, you download what you use and that's it. Also keep in mind there's some advanced settings if you wanna get in here, such as using feeds, or you can actually upgrade to a premium model to change sort of the scheduler, which is, you know, how the noise affects the generation. So you've got a few different options there, but. For what we have here, this is a pretty powerful tool and it's free what I've done. I haven't signed up for premium. So uh, I'm gonna download my artwork and it will give me a PNG that I can open up. I'm gonna open that up in Photoshop and take a look. So I've got a PNG and you'll notice because we didn't have things lined up perfectly, there is a bit of transparency here where it hasn't lined up. But uh, I can easily fix that with a content aware fill in Photoshop. But uh, otherwise, you can see how it's blended everything together nicely and created this nice image. And the resolution is 2565 by 1539. Now, one thing you might want to keep in mind, this original image, I believe, was actually larger than that. So if I cut back over to Leonardo AI, if I take my pointer tool, I'm gonna to just zoom out a little bit. I can't zoom out any further, sorry. If I select everything like this and enlarge it, on the canvas and then save my artwork. I'm gonna to go to image, image size, and we have 3665 by 220. So by actually shrinking things on the canvas, the file you download will be smaller. It won't introduce more quality by enlarging it, but if you have a high resolution image that it's working off of, you will lose some resolution if you don't try and keep it at its native size. So that's something to consider when using this, but otherwise it's a pretty good result and you can always do some kind of post to this, like you can use the Topaz Gigapixel Upscaler to try and upscale that and get a much nicer result if you want to and improve it. Uh, I'll pop a link to that down below if you wanna check that out, but otherwise it's a pretty cool tool. Highly recommend checking that out. So that is Leonardo AI, I'll leave links below to it. I've also got a few videos, which uh, I'll pop a playlist link down below so you can check out more of the uh, options of Leonardo AI. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed the video. Have a great day and we'll see you again soon.